Jannik og hans gode ski Nordlyset forlod Danmark for snart to år siden for at tage på jordomsejling. De har på nuværende tidspunkt sejlet ca. 20.000 sømi og er nået om på den anden side af jorden, nemlig Australien. Det her er beretningen om, hvordan det er at sejle rundt langt væk hjemmefra, men i høj grad også om en anderledes hverdag, hvor alt foregår i fællesskab. Vi tager jer med på vores eventyr og deler både opture og nedture. I denne episode er kursen sat mod Restoration Island, hvor vi møder eneboeren Dave, der med glæde inviterer os ind i hans hjem og fortæller om sit liv. Hvordan han tidligere var millionær og boede i Sydney, til at han endte op som eneboer på Restoration Island. Fra Lizard Island havde vi nogle dage sejlads til Restoration Island. Sejladsen startede med fuld sol og god vind, men da vi drejede om pynten, blæste det op. Sejladsen blev en af de hårdeste, vi har haft med en stærk vind ind forfra i et par timer, mens vi sejlede mellem to brev. At have vinden ind forfra betyder for båden, at den vil krænge meget. Vi måtte flere gange ræbe forsejlet, således at vi til sidst kun havde to meter forsejl ude. Heller ikke alle ombord gik fri af søsyge. Ja. Janik, kan du ikke lige forklare, hvad hejhatten er? Jo, fordi hvis man har det dårligt, så er øh, sådan en lille gestus til hejhatten, når man giver den føde, så tager den. Ah, det giver mening. Det er fandme gennemtænkt, ja. Næste morgen ankom vi til Restoration Island. Da området har meget rev omkring sig, og flere skibe tidligere stødt på grund ved øen, havde vi en mand i masten og en ude i stævnen til at holde øje. Straks da vi ankom, tog vi alle afsted mod øen for at møde øens eneste beboer, Dave, som vi havde hørt om fra de andre sejlere på Lizard Island. Dave har boet på øen de sidste 22 år og har gjort stedet til sit eget. Tidligere i hans liv ejede han et børsnoteret firma til mange millioner dollars. Han investerede hele hans families formue, men tabte den i 1987, da børsmarkedet faldt sammen. Efterfølgende havde han behov for at forsvinde fra overfladen, da han ikke længere var villigt i hans familie. Oprindeligt skulle han bo på øen med hans nye kæreste, Forholdet holdt desværre ikke, men det lykkedes Dave at finde sig en ny tilværelse på Restoration Island. Selvom Dave har rundet de 77 år, har han stadig mange visioner for øen og planlægger at udleve resten af sit liv her. Dave inviterede os med op på sin terrasse, hvor han fortalte om øens historie og hans uh, egen. This place is called Restoration Island, and it was named by Captain Bly. Mm-hmm. It was an Englishman, a famous Englishman, uh, 200, 240 years ago, May 1789. He landed here, 24th of May, on yeah. a Saturday uh, in the afternoon. And yeah, the men were restored, according to the journal, uh, which I don't think is true, that, that they were restored in one day. Oh. Well, they were almost dead, because they had very little food or water. Yeah. And they survived... 40 days in this rowing boat with a sail, yeah. and they weren't expected to live. So 40 days in a boat, inexperienced people, but a bit like you guys, you haven't had a lot of it. young, and all yeah. the other, so very young, and, and they went with Bly, and he was a, he was probably the great one of the greatest captains ever, because to manage the food and the water yeah. without sneaking it fairly, equally on a boat is not easy, and he got them here alive. And they, he named the island restoration after the restoration of King Charles to the, the anniversary of King Charles to the throne in England mm-hmm. and the restoration of the men. 
So that's what was named Restoration, which is a really good name. Yeah. And it means something in our history, European history. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's what it's done for me. So I've come here in trouble, basically, mm -hmm. as a businessman, a failed marriage, lost a lot of money. Uh, you know, this is what happens. Well, a crash, a stock market crash, money. And I look back on it, best thing ever happened to me. I'm glad it all happened that way. Because if I had stayed where I was, I probably wouldn't have been alive. Because everybody, all my friends, are all sick or dying or dead years ago, in their 50s. It's ridiculous. I don't see myself as an old I'm older than you guys, but I'm not an old fart. I'm an older fart. Big difference. Mm. You know, in here, yeah. I, talk, I like talking to you guys. I, I don't like talking to other people because they're all talking shit. They should know better. Yeah. You know, and you and yeah, you know, this has been a an incredible restoration for me personally here, where where I've got a new life. Yeah. So you've like, been here for twenty two years, years now. Twenty two years. Yeah. And I wish I was born here. And I didn't know about the world. That's what I, I would like to have known. And I said, well, I just need another life. And I want to get out of the city. I'm sick of the cities. I've been there, done that. I don't want to go back to all that. And uh, so the crazy idea of doing this is the best idea I've ever had, as it turned out, because here I am and I'm enjoying life at the fullest. But I could do more. I'm, I'm only just starting. Yeah. And what I really want to do is uh, it's frustrating. I, I'm not very patient, really, but you have to learn patience. Yeah. Here. You know, it's a very tough place on, your, on, on that. And you've got to realise that things are not easy here, and they're not. Sometimes can be very tough here, you know, but but that's the way life is. There's a lot of good sides. Good to have you guys, new people, always interesting, particularly foreign people, because they look at Australia very differently. So I'm living on an island where historically, you know, a captain arrived with his crew. And, you know, the restoration idea is a pretty simple one to me, and it's worked for me. Yeah. And I want to make that for others, help others. Yeah. But you know, um, you know, it's a, it's, I live in probably one of the nicest places on earth. Yet there are the indigenous people who live around me, mm. living like a living in like in a third world, which is absolutely wrong. And you know, I'm trying to help, you know, by having them in as my partner here, long term. So I don't know. I've got a reason for doing what I do, you know. Yeah. And, and that's pretty good in life. It takes you a while to work out what you really want to do. Dave inviterede os med på en rundtur i hans hus. Huset var præg af, at øen havde været ramt af en cyklon, som han fortsat var ved at rydde op efter. So this is my kitchen here. Ah. Two little boomers. Yeah. And, I, and I've got, well this is just bulk food, but I've got food everywhere. <laughs> and then here was a bath. She's from Africa, she wanted a bath. Yeah. Hot water, you know. So this is all, this all, this all building fell over. Okay, but here is the bath. Or... Here is the bath. In there, insulated. Ah, oh, okay. Little bird's nest, little sunbird. Lives in there. These are my kids and our little. Wow. This is the one that committed suicide, this one. Here we go. Baby. Oh. Yeah. So Dummy sweet. gone. Yeah. I miss this girl, I tell you what. I didn't have any boys at that stage. My oldest daughter, she's now in her 40s, she's got a four year old. So this was a toy company that I was involved in. I started. Alright, I've had a bit on, I sleep there, but a big double bed and I've got more. I've got oh, stuff yeah. everywhere, you know. That's a good should all bed. basically we'll pack it up, put it in the shed, then reconfigure the whole thing. It'll take up time. Yeah. So a little wardrobe, not much. And what you you got don't what need you need, much. I guess. Yeah. Got some clothes, books. I've got stuff. Too much stuff, but <laughs> but you use all this stuff. You know, I use the things. You know. Yeah. You know. There's my two girlfriends. Ah. <laughs> yes. Miranda and Phyllis. Miranda and Phyllis. Who is who? <laughs> this is Miranda. Yes. And she's a, there's a book written about her too. And this is Phyllis. How much of a hat? Ah, uh, she lost her hat. Oh. She's a bit boring. She's not as she's not as pretty as this one. No. <laughs> But her hands keep she's starting to fall apart, you know. Oh, oh okay. That's not good. She's a bit worn out. I need a newer girlfriend, I think. <laughs> 
you know. A business idea in New Guinea before white people. We went into New Guinea for, on this map. This is before the official white people in New Guinea, this map. Not in the 1920s. It covers two and a half thousand square kilometres. So this is a map over New, over New Guinea? Yeah, when I went into exp gold exploration, I got involved with the gold exploration company. Ah, so you actually used this map yep. when you were back? Wow. Yep. Yeah, my mate found it in a safe. His grandfather's safe. They stole all the money and he only left the map. He came so to me kind and of said, a pirate's map. Yeah, and he said to me, you know about mining and stuff. I said, well, I don't really. But, and I, I said, well, I'll take it to a mate of mine that does, who discovered a huge gold mine in New Guinea. And he was very interested. Yeah. Did you find the gold mine? Well, no, well, gold, between gold exploration and a mine, yeah. could be 20 or 30 years. Yeah. It's, a, it's you, don't, you make a mine, you don't find a mine. Yeah. You walk in New Guinea, you find gold in, everywhere. So I'll get the boys one another book. book. That, that's oh, it's yeah. Oh, yeah, we would love to have a book for a library. Yeah. Yeah. Dave forærede os to eksemplarer af hans selvbiografi, A Millionaire yeah. Castaway, <laughs> en til hver af bådene. <laughs> but anyway, it's a fun one. Huh? Yeah, and then here's uh, all more stuff. Eftermiddagen gik med træning på stranden for pigernes vedkommende, udforskning af Daves båd for drengenes, og i fællesskab blev der gjort en indsats for at få nye forsyninger af kokosnødder til båden. Kan du få det til, Diana? Nej, jeg kan bare overhovedet. Hvad med dig, Jo? Hvordan går det? Kokkenat. Dagen efter ankom en rejefiskerbåd, som inviterede os på besøg. De fortalte os, hvordan de med net, der trækkes langs bunden, fanger rejer. Når de finder et område med rejer, sejler de frem og tilbage langs den samme linje i fire timer. Autopiloten styrer båden, mens fiskerne sorterer fangsten bag os i båden efter rejerne koges og fryses ned. Om aftenen havde Dave inviteret til bål på strand. Her medbragte fiskerne både rejer, krabs og kammuslinger i massevis, som blev pillet og spist direkte fra varmen. Men kan jeg også spise halen her? Jeg er lidt forvirret. Du skal have det bagerste. Hvad er vi i gang med? Vi er lige ved at pille rejer, som fiskerne har haft med. Det er vildt lækkert. Næste morgen sorterede vi vores affald, da der var pand på alle flaskerne. Det lokale Aboriginal folk bruger panden til skolematerialer, så de fik lov til at få alle vores tomme flasker. Jannik og Nordstjernens skipper Sune tog sammen med Dave ind til det lokale samfund i Lockhart for at se stedet og give dem flaskerne. Dave fortalte, at vilkårene i de små Aboriginal samfund var sammenlignelige med tredje verdenslande. Da Dave og drengene kom tilbage, havde de lidt friske forsyninger med, og vi inviterede Dave ombord for at se nordlyset. Bye!
Vi vinkede farvel til Dave, og straks efter var pigerne i krig med de nye forsyninger. Hvad spiser I, piger? Vi har fået yoghurt, og det har vi ikke fået i tre uger. Mm. <laughs> mm. Det var de der friske varer, der er så lækkert. Ankeret blev endnu en gang kørt op, og vi vinkede farvel til Restoration Island. At se øen og møde Dave var en kæmpe oplevelse, som vi aldrig vil glemme. Den gæstfrihed og interesse, Dave viste os, var fantastisk. Og det betyder utrolig meget at få lov til at møde et menneske som Dave, der lever et så anderledes liv. Se med i næste episode, hvor vi besøger Margaret Bay. Ved Margaret Bay følger vi Blue Track over til den anden bugt, hvor vi finder en dinghy, som vi tager med tilbage. Vi fanger krabber med hænderne og masser af fisk.